why is containment so important to you guys? Uh, containment helps us be more efficient in the data center. We're, get, we're capturing the old cold air, we're not mixing with the hot air. Um, we've worked with Sub-Zero, they've done a good job for us. Uh, we basically, it, it affects your bottom line on PUE, it reduces the amount of cooling you need. It's overall, it's, it's just something you have to have this in this day and age with high density. If you were to tell someone about containment and why it would be important for their bottom line, what would you say? Uh, it's going to be cost. I mean, basically, you're you're making your cooling more efficient. Uh, most legacy data centers, the cooling is not efficient at all. You have hot and air, hot and cold air mixing, so you're running more of your cooling system to basically recool air that wasn't even hot. So that's what I would say. I'm here with Kelly Sullivan, and I understand you also deal with containment in your business a lot. Tell me why it's so valuable to you. Well, uh, it helps to segregate the air, the hot and cold air. Um, we've been putting in uh, actually your containment, the sub-zero containment, for uh, quite some time. And so we've been able to control the hot and cold air, uh, which has allowed our system to run more efficiently. And uh, we are, have seen a significant uh, cost savings. Uh, by doing this uh, and also it, it helps to uh, keep the temperatures consistent with the customer servers. I love when it affects the bottom line. We can all be happy about that. So here at Data Center World, are you noticing anything, whether it's here at our booth or just industry, how it's moving and trending forward that's getting you guys excited? Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen uh, the industry evolve a little bit uh, as far as the, from the traditional way we used to uh, we used to do things. Uh, now there's there's more uh, cooling to the cabinet level, and um, and you know, K, now we're trying to develop uh, areas of K, of cabinets that that don't have cages around them to save more square footage in the centers because the more square footage in the data center you can preserve, uh, the more potential uh, revenue you can have on that floor space. Ben, why is it important to be able to customize your containment system? Well, being able to customize the containment allows us to have proper containment within the hot and the cold dials, which helps us control differential pressure, the cold and the hot for PUE. And why it's important to be able to customize that is because you can have multiple different rack profiles where you have to be able to be flexible with that depending on the business unit or the environment which you're installing that in. So it allows us for growth and flexibility and to be continuously involved in trying to improve our PUE and, and those matters in the data center. Can I ask you, um, are you excited about some of the things in the containment system industry that you're seeing come out, some of the new advancements and technologies? Oh, definitely. As, as we go along, everything gets better as we keep moving forward. As more people are getting involved in containment and more people are trying to utilize it in, their, in the data centers, we can grow as a community and, and that really helps everyone. And then, Specifically, what kinds of things are you seeing here at this conference, at this booth, and other booths that are exciting you? Well, of course, the Sub Zero. I, I was hoping for the bear here, but I didn't get to see it, so we'll have to maybe keep an eye out for that later. But no, there's a lot of great things within here, uh, within the containment. There's a lot of enhancements here within Sub Zero alone that have been pretty impressive. Uh, we've been able to work with them in the past and, and look forward to working with them some more in the future. We're here with Sean Mills from Greenhouse Data. Sean, why is containment important to what you guys do? So we're a co-location and cloud infrastructure as a service company that's really focused on being as energy efficient as possible. Containment systems for us allow us to be highly energy efficient so that we can pass along some of those savings to our customers that are leveraging our co-location infrastructure. What is it that you've seen here at this event, Data Center World, either at the Sub-Zero Engineering booth or elsewhere, that's exciting you about where this market's going? So we're actually specifically here to look at different containment systems. Uh, we've had the opportunity to look at a bunch of the different vendors. Uh, I am highly impressed with the Sub-Zero uh, facility and the containment system that they have, and so we're definitely going to be taking a look at what they can do for us as we continue to build out our super energy efficient data centers. This is Jason Lau from JPT Global. Jason, tell me about airflow management in Hong Kong. Well, uh, airflow management is getting more and more important in Hong Kong. Uh, so I think uh, we are putting more and more uh, 
co-op containment projects in Hong Kong so that they don't have to bother about the uh, hotspot or they can do more energy saving in the data center, whatever it is a new build or an retrofitting projects. Um, is there anything you've seen here at, at this booth or anywhere at Data Center World Show that's uh, exciting for you that you'll take back to Hong Kong? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think the new design of the uh, rechargeable uh, polar, polar cap, uh, which is very flexible, so I think we'll bring it back to Hong Kong and other projects in Asia as well. I'm here with Anthony Salinas at Data Center World 2014. Anthony, what are some of the steps your company is taking to reduce the use of cooling energy? Absolutely. So, you know, there are currently five steps that you need to take in order to, to be energy efficient. Um, the first step is measuring your PUE. You can't manage what you don't measure. And the first step that you want to do is manage your PUE. There's something in the data center industry called power usage effectiveness. And measuring to help reduce non-computing functions like cooling and power distribution is a big part of the data center industry. So managing your PUE is a very important part of running and operating a data center. And keeping costs low is, is how you're able to measure that, uh, measuring your PUE. Okay, that was the first step. I know you guys are taking quite a few. What's another thing you're doing? So the second step is managing airflow. Using best practices in data centers such as cold aisle containment solutions, hot aisle containment solutions, um, blanking panels, uh, computational fluid dynamics across your data center floor, seeing where the heat zones are, making sure that you're able to capture you know, any loss of airflow around your data center. Very important to managing your airflow throughout your data center. That seems quite important as well. Anything else? Yeah, so you got a couple more things. Adjust the thermostat on your on your set, set points for your crack or cray units. You know, huge importance. Um, you know, there, there's a huge myth in everyone saying that you need to keep your data center at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Absolutely not the truth. You, you know, new, the new ASHRAE standards nowadays let you know that, hey, you can run your data center at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, ambient temperature, and there's not going to be any, you know, issues in doing that. And one of the most, you know, common things nowadays is trying to reduce your costs. So why not up, up the, the temperature a little bit, bring down your costs, and control the differences between the hot and cold aisle that you're trying to contain within your data center. Again, managing your PUE. There's still a couple more things you guys are doing for airflow management, what else? Yeah, so the use of free cooling is, is a big one, right? Chillers typically use the most energy in a data center's cooling infrastructure. So you'll find that the largest you know, opportunity in savings to minimize is to minimize you know, that use. Take advantage of the free cooling to remove heat from your facility without using a chiller. This can include using low temperature ambient air, evaporated water, or a large thermal reservoir. While there's you know, more than one way to free cooling, you know, using outside air economization and heat exchangers are a proven and readily available solution that's out in the industry right now for you. Last but not least, one more step to reducing your use of cooling energy. Yeah, so the last one is optimize your power distribution. You can minimize power distribution by eliminating as many power conversion steps as possible. So, for example, you're going to have a UPS system that has a transformer built into it. You're going to have a PDU that has a transformer built into it. And again, you know, all the way down to the rack level. You know, find, you know, systems that that are power factor of one these days, or find a UPS system that has better efficient, uh, e e efficiencies that can drive your PUE up within your data center to be able to gain more efficient steps. I'm here with Martin Casillas, who is a fire marshal here in Southern Nevada. Martin, how important is it for data centers to comply with NFPA standards? It's essential that all data centers comply with the design and installation of systems associated with NFPA. So those systems are created and installed to protect the people and the products and benefits of the community. So NFPA standards are most essential and necessary to be complied with. Sounds like very important stuff. Thank you, Martin. I'm here with Cindy Jost from CenturyLink Technology Solutions. Cindy, why is containment important to your company? 
It's really important to the technology solutions part of CenturyLink to save money and energy, and energy is really important for all of us to save. So we, we really feel like containment is the next wave for all of the data centers and for the solution. Speaking of where the industry is going, there's a lot of great things here at Data Center World, uh, even right here at the Sub-Zero Engineering booth. Anything that's particularly exciting you in CenturyLink? We're, we're looking at all the containment, actually, um, and actually the hard containment, even so going even further with containment, not just the curtains, but really taking it further and uh, having total enclosure of all the hot and cold aisles. And then finally, do you think containment is something that can help your bottom line? Absolutely. It's already doing it. We've proved it out. I'm here with Ed Landon from McKinstry, and we want to know how McKinstry feels about airflow management for their customers. At McKinstry, we believe that airflow management saves energy and ensures cooling air to IT equipment. That is very important. I'm here with John Inaba from Raritan. John, we're interested in hearing from you what the correlation is between airflow management and power management. Well, really anytime you introduce a load into the data center environment, you are introducing heat, and therefore the ability to mitigate that heat is a directly correlated to the amount of power in the data center. And so our our environment is really predicated upon the ability to cool a load within the, in that rack environment. So cooling things down is just as important as uh, heating them up, huh? Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome.